What I never understood about this here, right, y'all, that the NAACP was founded by some white folks and some black folks, right? So it's a big deal that she was pretending to be black, to be the president of the NAACP. But like I said, the double eight, the double, the NAACP was founded by white folks, y'all. So what's wrong with her? Pretending to be black and, and becoming the president of the NAACP. When all you sisters out here put on these blonde wigs and try to look white. I don't get y'all people, man. Y'all only fit the narrative for the soup jar. Fuck that. She looked good. She looked good. She should have stayed the president. Because most of these black girls out here want to look white. They bleach their skin. They put on blonde wigs and fake eyelashes, they try to look white, y'all. So when white people do it, it's a big deal. Come on, y'all. Grow the fuck up, y'all. Went viral and became a hashtag for anyone claiming a race or culture they were not born into. Rachel Dolezal says she was living her life as an active member of the black community. Many within her community saw Rachel as a respected civil rights activist. She was president of the local NAACP chapter. You see Coon as uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson. You know what I'm saying? See that Coon ass nigga? He probably was trying to get real, real close to her, if y'all know what I mean. Let's go. And an instructor of Africana Studies at Eastern Washington University with a bachelor's in arts and a master's in fine art from Howard mm. University. Then, in 2015, this childhood photo of a blonde-haired white Rachel was a piece of her unraveling. When it was revealed, she had constructed a life around black culture. Rachel was fired from her job, forced off community boards. Social media erupted hundreds of thousands of tweets mocking her while others were disgusted by her perceived role Look as that. a culture vulture. Look at that, y'all. How is she a culture vulture when well, most of these black girls out here must be culture vultures trying to be white then? Right or wrong? I'm only going by what y'all saying. If y'all calling her a culture vulture because she was trying to be black, what do you call black women trying to be white with these white, with these blonde wigs trying to look white and act white and talk white and bleach their skin? Are they culture vultures too? Let's go. Today, almost six years later, Rachel says she is still being punished, unable to find a job in the field she'd been thriving in for years and struggling to provide for her three sons. Though she admitted she did not correct some assumptions that she was black, she questions the pound of flesh she's still required to pay for her actions. Rachel Dolezal joins us now from her home in Tucson, Arizona. Rachel, thank you so much. For joining us. What's um, up, Rachel? You know, part Where of the reason at? I wanted you on the show is really the punishment of, of this. Um, you've had the documentary. I first encountered you briefly when I was at the Today Show and you were there um, being interviewed. And I want to talk a little bit later about your life now and, and how it's been affected. But you see these headlines. And there's since your story, as I said at the beginning of the show, it seems like there's one a month. And it's not just black, white, it's Latino, it's Asian, all these storylines. How do you process it, especially when your name is attached to some of these stories? Out of nowhere, hashtag racial dozo. Right. Well, it, it is really tough, you know, to relive that every day and every week, as you said, whatever the case, if somebody if somebody's name comes up attached to um, what people feel is a problematic identity, then I'm hashtag and there are memes, you know, Kamala Dolezal, all these kind of things that have been created that come my way and I'm tagged in. And, and what I really wish is that um, people could see me, you know, more for who I am than, than the what, you know, a mother, an activist, an artist. Um, that's really the who I am. And when it comes to race and identity, I've always identified racially as human, but have found more of a home in black culture in the black community. And um, that hasn't changed. I mean, I'm, I'm still the same person I was in May of 2015. Um, I'm still doing the work. I'm still pressing forward, but it has been really tough for sure. You know, having 
not had a job for six years. I've had to create my own job and um, find ways to provide for my children through braiding hair, through mm. um, grant writing to bring funds um, into um, marginalized communities and black owned businesses. That's fucked up, man, because these black girls can go out here and try to act white. But when white people try to act black, it's a big deal, man. That's crazy, man. Where you at, Rachel? You want to be black? Come on down here and holler. Because most of these black girls around here want to be white. And you want to be African-American. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where you at? Come on and holler. Brothers will holler at you, sis. Brothers are holler at you because they getting tired of seeing these sisters with these blonde wigs on and bleaching their skin. Let's go. Businesses and nonprofits through painting, um, through doing pep talks on cameo.com. So, you know, you can't change who you are to, to but, but you, you know, can change who you are. Um, people change every day. And at the core of your story, isn't it in some ways about changing to what you want it to be, whether people agree with it or not? You you did. Sh no, I, no, I mean, I don't really. I, I think it's more of a story for anyone who reads my book. You know, you can really see it's a whole life and it's more of a story of becoming than changing. It's more of a story of finding a home culturally. And it's not uh, one of you know, somehow pretending or faking or changing, it's just becoming. And if, if I had, um, you know, changed, then, you know, there would be this flip flopping or maybe I would have somehow. I'm going to end the video. Y'all just wanted to show y'all, uh, enlighten y'all about she was pretending to be black and she became the president of the NAACP. And, you know, she, uh, resigned. Everybody was throwing her under the bus because they said she wasn't really black and they don't believe she did this and this, that, and the third. But yet, these sisters gonna walk around here looking crazy. Would you rather have the real deal or some fake shit? <laughs> With that being said, peace.